we learn things about uh, energy and the uh, work. Okay, we step in some uh, equations to start the motion uh, by using the concept of the energy or uh, work. And now we are going to introduce another kind of relationship to starting motion uh, in terms of the momentum and impulse. Remember how, how did we introduce uh, work energy theory? Okay. We start from we started from the Newton second law, right? And integrated both sides. By that time we assume we know the force as a function of position. So we try to integrate it uh, with respect to position x. But suppose you know the force as a function of time, okay. So we should integrate it with respect to time. So now let's start with the Newton second law. F net equals to M A, which is M E V D. Now let's see what happens if we try to integrate it, uh, both sides with time. But we need, in this case, we need to rearrange the equation as f net uh, multiplied by dt equals to m t v. And then we integrate it and both sides the right hand side you can pull out the mass it's a constant so it's m integrate of this okay. and this integration can directly be evaluated this will give you delta v right? Okay, it will give you v from initial time uh, velocity to the final velocity. So this, this is actually v minus v naught in delta. Okay. So we get this. Okay, this is time integral of. The Newton second law. Now, we are going to give some name for the terms here. Let's call MV as momentum or linear momentum. So that's the reason we want to introduce this quantity P equals to MV because that's this term here. And we also call this term the time integral of the uh, force <coughs> okay, J This is uh, in pounds We call this term impulse. So after that, we got the so-called uh, impulse momentum theory. This is J, this is delta P. So J equals to delta P. So the momentum change equals to the impulse. Okay. Question? Um, is it always going to be is it always going to be a definite integral from initial to final? Yes, in this part we are doing the definite integral. In fact, uh, you are going to get the same thing by doing definite integral or uh, indefinite integral in the physics. If you do the definite indefinite integral, do you remember that? Then you have some arbitrary constant. And then you still need to use the initial condition to uh, determine the arbitrary constant. In that case, it's the same as you do a definite integral from the initial state to the final state. Okay. But 
But sometimes it's easier to do the definite integral. Sometimes it's uh, easier to do the indefinite integral. <coughs> okay. So here we are doing some integral here. We get the impulse momentum zero. Okay. And we can try to compare it with the work kinetic en energy theorem. Remember, for the work kinetic energy theorem, we are still doing some integral. But what we are doing is we multiply both sides by dx. Right? And here, we multiply both sides by dt. Okay, so this is actually dt. Cancels, you get this. Okay. And this one, we multiply both sides by dx, dx, and dx dt is v, so you get f net dx, and n, this is m v dv, and then you integrate both sides. So you can see, one is you multiply both sides by dx and do the integral, and another is you multiply both sides by dt, do the integral. So, they actually related two uh, important aspects. One is related to time, another is related to space. Okay. So, you can see there are some uh, kind of uh, general stuff behind, uh, the general thought behind this kind of uh, operation. Okay. And from that, we get the work energy theorem K of uh, W net equals to delta K. Here, in fact, it's J net, okay. J net equals to delta T. They start with the same motion from different point of view. Okay. So, this one, you can think about it this way. Uh, you already integrated with respect to time. So you don't have, after you do the integration, integration, it has nothing with, to do with the time. And this one, it has nothing to do with uh, uh, space. So you just, uh, in the real world, you have time and space, but when you try to uh, solve the problem, you need to either get rid of the time dependence or either the space dependence. Okay. So, we try to start the motion by simplifying the problem. And, okay, in fact, later, uh, not later, in this class, we, we don't know if we have time to discuss this. Uh, but we mentioned this before, in the theory of spatial, uh, spatial theory of the relativity, we think that uh, our new theory, we assume the and we verified that the space and time are actually related to each other. Okay. So in fact, our manipulation has to reflect this point. In that case, the momentum and energy will be related to each other okay. in some way. Okay, so that's how we get the Impulse momentum theorem and uh, why we want to introduce the two quantities, impulse and the momentum. And now let's talk more about the momentum. Uh, this is for one particle with mass m. Okay, the momentum is simply mv. Uh, two things you need to uh, pay attention to. First, first is the velocity. Here we are talking of one dimension. But in a three dimension, the velocity is a vector, right? So the momentum equals to mv multiplied by v. A scalar multiplied by a vector, so it's a still a vector. Okay. Actually, the vector nature of the momentum is completely determined by the velocity vector. Okay. It's almost the same thing. Okay. Different with each other by a m, a constant mass. And for the system with more than one particles, the momentum, total momentum is just as a vector summation of all the individual momentum. Okay. So you just add them together. It's known that's a vector summation. Um, 
Okay. For the impulse J equals to this one, if we uh, do it in the three dimension, then it will be the vector force multiplied by uh, integrated with time. So after you do that, you still get a vector. So J, the impulse, is actually a vector. Okay. It's, uh, the direction is the same as the force. Okay. In the vector form, if you do this, actually you can see you are, what you are going to do is that the force can be written as Fx, I cap, Fy, J cap, plus Fz, K cap. And you integrate it with the T. So, if you do that, you are going to get three terms. I cap, J cap, K cap, they are constant unit vectors. So, it wouldn't be inside of the integral. So, you get this. You are going to get three terms like that. And by definition, this will be uh, Jx, right? <coughs> I cap. This will be Jy and J cap. This will be uh, Jz, K cap. So it will give you the x, y, z component of the impulse. So they are just a standard uh, output manipulation for the vector. Any question here? And, of course, um, you have to do the integral if the force is a function of the time. It's, if the force is constant, if it's independent with the time, so you can back it out. So in that case, for constant f, j will be at f integral, integral of time, but this is delta t, okay. So for constant force, uh, the impulse is just force multiplied by the time interval. Similarly, for constant force, the work is also the force multiplied by displacement, right? Okay. So, in another word, how do we understand the impulse and work? Impulse, both of them uh, measure the effect of the force, but they measure the accumulated effect of the force. So, like when you have a force, if you act it for a long time or long distance, then you will have more effect, impact to the object. So, in chaos, measured the effect of the force accumulated through a time interval. And the work measures the effect or the impact of the force accumulated through a distance. And so you can see, for a particular uh, pushing, like or pulling, uh, like if you push some object uh, quickly, with, in a very fast speed, but a long distance, so you, have, you will have like a, a kind of small uh, impulse, but larger uh, work. Okay. And or, if you uh, push it very slowly uh, for a long time, for a short distance, you can make a large impulse but small work. Okay, because they determine by delta t and delta f. 